Deputy Labour leader Angela Rayner is facing scrutiny over the sale of her council house in 2015. Rayner bought her council house in 2007 and sold it eight years later for a tidy 48k profit. Cheers to Maggie, there's nothing wrong with that. Rayner says she owned her own home, lived there, paid the bills there and was registered to vote there prior to selling it in 2015. The only problem is, when Rayner marries her husband in 2010, she re-registers her children's birth certificates and puts her address at her husband's property, one mile away. At the same time, Rayner's neighbours say that her brother Darren Bowen is the sole occupier of her property. They even go so far as to say that he calls her his landlady. But why is any of this important? Well, Rayner's still registered as living at her house on the electoral roll until 2015, and when she does sell that place, she doesn't pay any capital gains tax because she's registered it as her principal private residence, and she's claimed relief. So that clarifies a few things for me. We, would I be right in thinking you were the first person to spot the capital gains tax aspect of the Mail on Sunday story? The thing is, there's always a tax angle. So you can call her a hypocrite, but there's probably going to be something else going on under the surface. Because a lot of people think this story is just about her selling a council house that she bought under Maggie's right to buy, and they think, oh, While big deal. While criticising the right to buy at yes. the same time, exactly. So it's not that. We're not going on about that hypocrisy. That's just amusing. There's nothing wrong with that. It's about that she will have not paid capital gains tax on what essentially was a buy-to-let home. That's exactly right. There are numerous potential breaches of the law that I think have to be looked into. So let's go through them. So um, there's the Electoral Commission angle. She's on the electoral roll in the wrong address because her brother was living at her house. Yeah. Or she was living in the, well, she's a newlywed. She would have moved in with the husband. Exactly. What you've got to remember is the neighbours are seeing the brother come in and out of her house. She's claiming that the brother was living with the husband, the newlywed husband, in his house while she was living alone in her own house. Seems implausible. And also we have the, the birth certificate where she, exactly. where she is putting down on the day, as we expect, and this is the true and accurate position, Yeah. and if it wasn't, she'd have been perjuring herself, which is an offence on the birth certificate. Exactly true. She signed that herself, signed, sealed, delivered, done. So she's, she's, she's misrepresented herself to the Electoral Commission on, on the electoral roll in the wrong place. Not a big It crime. happens. It happens, right? Um, but if she's uh, effectively a buy-to-let landlord to her brother, she can't avail of the council house discount, can she? No, exactly. That would void the discount. She'd have to pay it back. So, so it's within five years... So you, get, so you get five years with a 25% discount of the market rate. Any periods that you're not living in the property primarily or you're renting it out, you can't claim that discount. So that proportion would have to be paid back to the council. So on a sliding scale sort of exactly. thing. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, got you. Now, if she's a buy to landlord and she's got the mortgage as a residential mortgage, Hasn't she misrepresented herself to the bank? I think that the bank would want to ask questions about that one. Because yeah. didn't somebody, uh, Peter Manelson, Lord Manelson, we must call him, have a similar situation where it was a minor thing, but he committed mortgage fraud? He did, and they went after him, rightly so. So she could be in trouble with the bank as well? I think that questions will have to be asked about that one, yeah. It's quite a lot of trouble. It is, and you know, she's been claiming this whole period that she was, wasn't a landlady, no one ever called her a landlady, and now this has come out. We've got the neighbours saying that they heard that she was and that her own brother said, oh, she's my landlady, that's the situation. So I think, I, I don't know, I'm not sure her story's really holding up with this mi- mi- mismatch. No wonder, no wonder why she's not answering questions. <laughs> Just something else that occurs to me. Do you think she would claim the single person's council discount if she was living on her own? Well, exactly. If, if you're an adult on your own in a house, then you get up, normally up to 25% discount on that council tax bill. So... She could have been claiming, according to her story, she's been living there the whole time. So she should have been claiming, she should have been claiming the council discount. If, if, if. So that would be five years of 25% discounted council tax bills. Well, that's really the cherry on the top of the fraudulent cake. It certainly is. And remember, she was an employee of the council as a care worker. So that's her own empl- one-time employer getting potentially defrauded once again. Well, she's got a lot of questions to answer. She certainly does.